Howdy folks, welcome back to another Bay 66 Chevelle video here. I'm working on my 78 F-150 here and finally starting to get somewhere. This truck is uh, originally, it's got a dual tank set up here on the driver's side. And uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to restore that. Now I don't know where the uh, switch was in the dash to swap from the front tank to the rear tank or from the rear to the front. Mine is missing, so I had to figure out where that was originally located. I have no idea. You know, I know the newer Fords were uh, on this side of the dash, on the driver's side of the dash, and you just flip the switch front to rear. But this truck, I'm not sure where it was at originally. I'll have to look around. I know somebody took it off, but. I have to figure that out but anyway long story short i made a video a while back actually quite a while back of this uh front gas tank here I ended up scrapping that tank out because that tank was shot somebody had jb welded at the top of it and like the famous uh a lot of the famous things that happens to these trucks is, is uh these straps right here these are old ones but their straps, a lot of times, they'll rub a hole in the tank and it'll make it leak, especially on this front one. But long story short, I'm trying to fix this truck back to getting the uh, both tanks from working again. So I got the front one, it's all completely taken off. The rear one wasn't even on the truck, so I had taken that off a long time ago. I just went to the junkyard and uh, I didn't want to buy that Chinese and Taiwan junk. But I went ahead and got a new uh, gas tank door here and uh, got that. The reason I had to get this is them idiots before had the uh, door on there and they had bolted it so it wouldn't open. So I guess to keep it from going like that, vibrating loose going down the road or whatever. But it wasn't too bad to get off. I ended up having to take and cut one of the studs off to get it off. But... I don't know what they did. The door is an original forward door. But the center piece is different, so I don't know what they did. It really doesn't matter, but so they had took two studs in there and put on there and uh, put two nuts on the end just to hold it shut. That's the original forward door, which is a shame. It's a nice door, but I thought they had just cut the end of it off and you know, just tighten it where it would shut because they had one end on the bed to hold this end shut and then they had the two studs on there and then the reason they had to cut it off is they kept spinning on there. So that was a little bit of a nightmare to get it off but I ended up just cutting this one because they ended up put them studs on there and they just kept turning on me. Anyway, long story short, I got that rigged up junk off there. I got a brand new tank sitting right here. Got a brand new sending unit in it. It's got a new sending unit in it. Brand new tank. I went to the junkyard. I got a filler neck for it. Ended up getting this, all this plastic uh, cover for it that goes up inside the bed there. I got nice original braces for it. I got the upper and the lower so that way I didn't buy that Taiwan and China junk. I got original filler neck for it. I'll have to get a hose to run for my vent to for to connect these two. But that ain't no big deal. This hose actually is uh it's original hose, but I mean it's not cracked up or nothing. I mean I think it'll work. A lot of times I don't know what it is, but it seems like if you use the original rubber, I mean it it's been on there for years and years and then it's not uh, cracked all to pieces and leaking or anything, so I'm going to use that because a lot of times when you use these reproduction stuff, it seems like they dry rot faster. I replaced this little grommet here on my C10 just for the, my fuel uh, neck here. And look at it, it's already cracked all to pieces. It ain't even, I want to say, uh, three years old and already cracked up. So I don't know. I think a lot of times that older rubbers. The original forward rubber is better, so I'm trying to use all original stuff as much as I can. I ended up getting two filler necks for it. These filler necks, I can't believe 
how much they want it for these filler necks. I got a really good deal on them. I got two filler necks. I got this hose right here, which is in really good shape. I just cleaned it up. It's just a little bit dirty, but uh, it's a nice original filler hose. Even got the original Ford clamps. So I'm trying to do as original as I can. Not that the clamps really matter. You can get clamps, but so this one's got the Ford logo on them. They all do. Hope y'all can pick that up. But they all got that Ford logo on them. So I got all original clamps on this thing. So I basically put it all back original, except for the tank and the sending unit. I took some, uh, one thing you want to do is I took some uh, roofing paper here and uh, cut it out to put on the top of the tank here to keep from rubbing the hole in it because a lot of times the weak spots are right in here on the tanks, on the back and the front. And it had, uh, this, when I pulled the straps off of 79, it had the that anti-squeak stuff, whatever you want to call it, there. But uh, it's only had one piece there, and of course we're missing three more. So I could, took and saved it and compared the two, and uh, it almost looks like roofing paper. So I just took some roofing paper cut out and put on it, and it's almost about the same material. So I'm going to use that on it, and hopefully it'll keep it from rubbing a hole in it. But uh, I'm not sure why they pulled the rear tank off of it. They were going to scrap that truck, so either they were going to pull it off to scrap the truck, but they left the front one on, which don't make sense, or either they were uh, pulled it off because it had a hole or it was rusted out or something like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to put this truck back original. We're going to put the dual tanks back on it because I want to fix it right. So I got all that straight, and uh, like I say about them filler necks, they were wanting almost $100 for it. I was looking online. I can't find anywhere that reproduces them or nothing. So that's one reason why I went to the junkyard. Just for that little plastic piece there, just to get a new reproduction. They want it like almost fifty dollars just for that little cover. It's all it is. It's a cover because it's like four different pieces. It's got the cover. Then you got a little gasket right here. Then you got two grommets. And then you got this little grommet down here, which this grommet's in really good shape. It's just got a lot of undercoating on it. I mean, that rubber is original rubber. I was going to buy reproduction, but I'm going to use all that because, I mean, it's not even dry rod. It's just undercoating on it is all it is. But I cleaned all that out. I bought both filler necks. I got the upper and lower straps. got that hose right there. I was going to get that hose, but ended up that hose was a little dry rod. Somebody had a heater hose on that truck. They rigged it up, we'll call it. But uh, that's original hose. But uh, got all that for 60 bucks. So I got two filler necks, the upper and lower braces, that filler hose right there. And I got a whole nother door that I'll show y'all. And plus uh, the, all this cover and all that. I got all that for 60 bucks. So I got a really good deal on it. Plus it's nice original Ford stuff. I'm even got it down to using the original bolts and everything. That way everything's put back as original as it can. So that way it'll fit nice, even the clamps. Like they're saying they're forward clamps but all story short trying to put this thing back original as much as it can because i found out the hard way using that reproduction stuff some of it's good but a lot of it's just junk so and i'll tell you a little secret on these trucks here that i just realized about it i went to the salvage yard and was looking all over the place trying to find that rear one like that and I found a couple quite a few trucks that had just the front one but uh it was either on the opposite side or either it was on the front well let me tell you a little secret the front and the rear are the exact same doors so you can interchange them and I believe the filler necks are the same I think <laughs> no they're not never mind all right I told y'all wrong but let me tell you a little secret in here. These little plastic covers, they're the exact same. The only difference is these uh, filler necks here. That's the only difference. So the doors and these little plastic covers, all that will interchange. So if you need, uh, like what I was going to do, I ended up getting lucky and just pulling one, a rear one off the uh, rear 79 truck. But uh, you can interchange them too, so that makes it nice. Now the filler hoses, this uh, piece down here, now that they're different they're different but as far as that little cover right there and them doors 
They're the exact same. If you look at it, it's upside down. It says 4LB65. And I got this one off a of rear uh, off a of rear back of the truck here. This one says 4LB65. They're the exact same. But uh end up getting that. So I had to get that so it would open the close right. Anyway, I ended up cleaning them braces and all up. Clean them up, paint them real nice. And uh got the uppers on here I ended up just cleaning them up real nice they're a really good shape now you can get these braces braided you can get the lowers you can find the lowers really easy but these uppers i couldn't find nowhere and uh the more i thought about it, that's what made me uh get original stuff because that way it's original and it fits nice because it came off a 79 f-150 and i know during it'll fit this 78 because it's the exact same thing Oh, honestly, they really didn't change that much. Even up to like the 90s, they're pretty much the exact same tank. Now, uh, the tank's a little offset, like on the late 80s and 90s, because it was fuel injection, so they had to change them up a little bit to put a in a tank fuel pump. But other than that, a lot of it interchanged. I mean, I could put a 96 tank on this truck and it would fit. But, uh, the way these straps fit here, they get little slots and just stick it through and it'll go up like it. So you just stick it through and it'll go up like it. And then I couldn't figure out, I forgot, but back here, we got two studs here. You got one there and you got one right down here. And you got, see if you look at your frame here, it's stamped a little bit different. I couldn't figure out, I couldn't remember how they went, but ended up figuring it out. See how it's stamped just a little bit different, stamped out just a little bit in that area. Anyway, that's where your studs go. They just drop right on through through there. But anyway, that's where we're at. It kept throwing me off because it had two slots in it. See, it's got them on this side back here, which is the same way they came off at 79. And then it's got them right here, so. That's what was throwing me off, but that's how the, they go there. I was actually thinking about putting a 38 gallon on the back of this truck. Because I was going to put a 38 gallon on it and do away with the front, mainly because of winter time, just to help weigh it down a little bit in the back, and help get a little bit of, uh, get around a little bit better with snow and stuff, kind of put a little weight on the back, but I ended up not going that route. Ended up uh, just putting it. 19 20 whatever you want to call it back on and uh this truck you tell had a rear tank on it because i was looking and it's going to be a really easy fix because we got our wires right here so this is for the sending unit right here now it's got some mud divers in it i'll have to clean them out but all we got to do is plug that up and that was a piece i saved off of another truck i just unplugged it and saved that little pigtail so we'll clean that up and we'll plug it up and uh, hopefully it will get it working again. Now I'd figure out better gauge and how to switch tanks or whatever. So I'm not quite sure about that, but we still got it up there where I took the front tank off so I can make something work. But anyway, that's where we're at. I'm gonna put the uh, side tank back on here eventually. But main reason I want to get this rear tank on here is I like the rear tank design a little bit better. Mainly because of winter time and everything it helped weigh the back of the truck down a little bit. But uh that's where we're at. I actually got some mud tires for this truck I'm gonna put on. I gotta buy two more. But uh they're uh all country EMT tires and they're same size 31 10 and a half. So I'm gonna put them on here and take these old junk ones off. I'd bought these tires just to get an inspection for it about a couple years ago, but ended up uh, I'm just not gonna run these tires. They just they dry rot all the pieces and they worn. They pretty much done. I mean they'd be alright just for a farm truck or something, but I bought some nice uh mud tires I'm gonna put on it and one of one of my ideas was I was wanting to make either my C ten or either this 78 here, I want to make one of them four-wheel drive. But I ain't decided which one I'm gonna do yet. But uh, that's where we're at right now. 
I just picked up a toolbox for it. I got this at a yard sale for 60 bucks. So I picked that up. So now both my trucks got a toolbox on the back. This is from Tractor Supply. But uh, anyway, I got a nice toolbox now. I still need to clean my bed off. I got a bunch of junk on there I need to clean off. But yeah, I just I like the idea. I like to either make this 78 four-wheel drive or either make my C10. Now, I really like to make my C10 four-wheel drive because that'd just be really, really rare. But it'd be a lot harder to do that truck, honestly. It'd be a lot easier to do the 78. But like in my previous video here, I got another 302 for it. I'm going to keep this motor. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to pull it out eventually. I just don't want to pull it out quite yet because I'm not quite ready. But I'm going to take in. Uh, I'm going to have to pull this exhaust manifold off on the driver's side because one of my freeze plugs uh, came out. So now I'm going to hold water, which ain't no big deal. And there goes the uh, popo. anyway long story short i'd like to make one of these four wheel drive and i think the easiest way to do it in my opinion instead of dealing with all this crap on the front end i'd rather just find a nice uh rolling frame that's already four wheel drive or find another pickup that's four wheel drive like the cab is you know rotted to pieces or something but the frame's in good shape because that's what i was thinking about doing with my c10 was just taking the cab and bed off and just switch everything over just do a whole frame swap because the bed, I mean, it's only six bolts on the bed. On the bed's easy to swap. And I just put a board across and take a cherry picker and raise it up there and pull the truck out. Set the bed on a couple uh, stands there. And then the cab, I think you got like about the same six bolts. Unbolt that, pick that off, set that to the side, take the front clip off, roll that, take that frame rolled out, and set everything over on the four wheel drive frame. And uh, the other thing, too, if you do it like that, then it'd be easier just to switch that motor out. I'd just go and swap the motor out way before you got the, while you got the cab and everything off of it. That way, it'd just be easier. got a little more room to work. But one of these two is either going to be that C10 or it's going to be this F-150. I want to make one of them full drive. This is one I really like to make full drive. I like to raise it up a little bit. It's got 31s on it. That was the main reason why I wanted 31s on it, too. I wanted to raise it up a little bit. I almost thought about putting, like, 32s on it. Raise it up a little bit more. Everybody that's seen it thinks it's full drive, but it's not. Because it's raised up a little bit higher. It's really, realistically, it only raised it up maybe half an inch to an inch at the most. Not that much. But... Them tires and uh, them tires I got locally. Them wheels actually came from the same junkyard. I got all this gas tank stuff from. But, but anyway, here that's where we're at. I'm getting ready to take and put this tank on this truck here. I got my upper braces in place. A lot of people forget about them. But I got them in place there. I'm gonna put my tank up. It's a little bit tricky to get them up in there. Easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Is go on put your filler hose on it like I did here on this tank here. And what I'll do is I'll slip it that slip that up underneath the frame there or on top of it. And then we'll take and uh, raise the other side up and just have to play with it a little bit to get it up in there. Cause it's a lot harder to to get that hose on to it while after the tank's up in there. It's easier just to put it go and put that hose on it and be done with it. The only hard part is uh, once you get this tank bulked up and everything, it's trying to get this fighting to get this filler neck here on this hose here. So I'm going to do this last. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it and the easiest, but I went ahead and uh, this is a different style tank. This one, you can get them with that uh, return, basically, is all it is, or the vapor. Uh, line, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if this truck had it or not. I doubt it. I didn't see it. But most, some of them got a return line for that charcoal canister and all that. All that is, it's a little hole on the top of this tank here. 
and all it is is like a vent for it and i actually would rather have it because it keeps the tank from getting pressurized and uh sometimes i had a little trouble with my c10 where uh it would leak through the sending unit because the tank was pressurized and then it would leak up through that sending unit I had a little trouble with it that's one thing I really want to get rid of. I know one thing, if I ever get make either one of these trucks four wheel drive, that tank, especially if this truck, either way, that tank is going to go. Because I can't stand it behind that cab like that. Yeah, I get tired of smelling gas and sloshing around all the time. It's cool at first, you know, because it's original, but once you drive it for a few years, it gets old, you get tired of smelling it all the time. I like to use this same style tank on the back of this truck. And I thought about using it on my Etzel too. I wish it was reversed instead of having the, the neck right here on the, on the uh, left hand side here and having the sitting unit there. I wish it was reversed because if you were to flip this tank around, just say that's the back of the car. I could take instead of having this uh, sitting unit there, I'd cut that out and get me a filler neck off the original, weld that on. And then get this tank centered up in the frame if it'll fit. And then weld this uh, filler hose over here up because I wouldn't need that. Just delete that, weld that up, cut this sitting unit out, put the filler hose right here. And then on the top here, I cut a little hole and put the sitting unit on top. And make it all work. I like to do that for my Etzel there if it would work. Because this one would, you could almost do that because that sitting unit's almost perfectly centered in the tank. I wish I could find one that's the opposite. Says so that's still a work in progress there, we'll call it. I gotta figure something out about that on my Etzel there. You can get the Galaxy tanks, but the necks are different. But anyway, here, just get back uh, this tank here. I got a little roofing paper. I just cut that out. It's almost the exact same material it was on. So I cut that out and use that on top. I got four pieces of it. So I got two on top and two on the bottom. So we'll go and get this thing on. I got my new sitting unit in it. And uh, all I gotta do is run my fuel line to it. And I'll probably for now I'm just gonna run it off the main fuel line that used to go to the front tank. So I'll just get a hose or something, and just run it on back a little bit further. And then I'll figure out something about getting them tied in together I just can't figure out how they had it they had to have a switch for the front and rear I would have thought for sure I would think on the F-250s like the 70s like his truck I would have thought for sure they would have had them like in the dash or something I would have thought it would have been like right in here or something so I wonder if they would have change this bezel out i wonder if that bezel's original or something if they would have changed that out or because i would have thought for sure it would have been some kind of switch i might be wrong on that but gotta figure out how they plumbed all that in so you could switch the front and rear tank or maybe they just had them tied in together and it just